Hello, everybody. Thanks for, for coming. We're going to give uh, just a couple of minutes to allow uh, some people that come right on time to get in here and uh, get settled. Uh, so we'll start in about two minutes. I'm just going to give it just just maybe one more minute. Okay, well, it looks like uh, most of the people that have registered are, are here. We have a few people still coming in, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get started today. Welcome. Thank you for, for coming to uh, our webinar today. Uh, my name is Buddy Oliver. I'm Vice President of Product Management here at Patton Electronics. Um, we we're going to talk to you today about uh, uh, Microsoft Teams and, and direct routing and how that uh, works with our our SBCs. <clears throat> so, you know, we all know that Teams is becoming ubiquitous in organizations all over the world. Um, as people continue to migrate to Teams, um, certainly last year and, and, and this year with the, with the global pandemic has caused people to think about different ways to work. Uh, remote work, um, collaborative work um, has, has become sort of the de facto standard and Teams uh, uh, certainly is leading the way with that. Um, you know, Teams is a, a unified collaboration platform. Oh, excuse me. Unified collaboration platform. Um, you know, it's a, and it's a key piece of real-time communication. Uh, you can collaborate on documents, document sharing. It's basically a place where what people live uh, as they do their work. And a vital part of that, you know, is voice communications. Um, and so that's where we come in um, with uh, direct, you know, the support for direct routing, you know, allows a lot of flexibility uh, in the way Teams is used for voice communication. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to give you a little overview of direct routing. Uh, we're going to talk about our, our SPC portfolio. Um, uh, we're going to look at some applications for Teams and so we can kind of get our heads around how it all goes together and, and works and the features and benefits. And then finally, we're going to talk about how easy it is um, to enable your patent devices uh, for Microsoft Teams. Um, so for the technical part of this, I'm going to turn things over to Miklo Sabo, uh, who is one of our FAEs and um, is very knowledgeable on the subject of Teams. And so uh, Miklos, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, buddy. Welcome, everybody. Uh, just uh, before we are jumping into the uh, the topic for Microsoft Teams and the certification, I just would like to know, uh, let you know that on the right hand side you have the go to webinar application, and on the go to webinar application there is a questions section. So please feel free to ask the questions during the webinar, and once we are once we are over with the slides, we will address uh, your questions. Uh, basically by the end of the presentation. All right, so uh, let me give you a little overview on what Microsoft Teams direct routing means. And 
I hope that I can switch to the next one. Yeah, it works. So basically, Microsoft Direct Routing is a service or a feature which allows a certified session border controller uh, to be connected to the Microsoft phone system services. Uh, with this feature, you can uh, access and you can connect to the phone services your Microsoft Teams client, or you can connect the public telephony uh, switch telephony network or any other SIP business telephony service, IPPBX, SIP trunk, whatever you can imagine in here. All the communication is going uh, on a secure way. So basically for the signaling, we use SIP TLS and for the media, we use uh, secure RTP. So basically it's a secure service. Before we are jumping into the applications, let me give you a little overview on the history point of view that how the pattern engagement with Microsoft systems looks like. Our engagement with, uh, with Microsoft and it's uh, uh, the predecessors of the teams is spanning back for a decade or even more. Uh, on that time in 2007, basically they called very similar service, but this service was an on-premise service. It was not a cloud-based service. They called it as a office communication suite, OCS. So we started the certification with that. And uh, very soon the Microsoft started to move from the office communication suite to link server. Uh, it had different versions, but it was still on premise. And basically with the acquisition of Skype, Microsoft started to migrate all the services into Skype for Business. With the Skype for Business, it was again, it was on premise from the beginning, but in the, uh, during the time, they changed it to the cloud-based solution. And in a very recent time, they renamed the service to Microsoft Teams and eventually, eventually they integrated into the Office 365 offering and it's a pure cloud-based solution. So what we were gonna talk today is basically uh, how the patent solution can be integrated part of the Microsoft Teams uh, direct routing Office 365 cloud-based solution. All right, so let's let's look into the overall portfolio. Here on this on this slide, you can see the different uh, SBCs we have in the portfolio. We marked the SBCs with a violet uh, Teams logo on top of them, which are certified for Microsoft Teams direct routing. You notice that there are also items on these slides which are marked with gray uh, logo of the Teams. We call them as ready for Microsoft Direct Routing. Uh, basically, the certification is not covering those products. But since we are running the same uh, software on those products as well as the certified product, they are working with the Teams environment. So how does it look like? As you can see, the violet logos, these, these, those are purpose-built hardwares. Uh, I, I will not go into the details. What are the difference between them? Because you can contact the support at patent.com. And basically the support people will help you to define the, the right solution for your application. What is the difference between them is basically uh, the first one, the SM5500 is a pure IP to IP solution without having TDM ports, just to simplify the stuff. And the rest of the uh, rest of the violet icons, under the violet icons, they are having uh, dedicated TDM ports for hybrid solutions. I will elaborate a little bit later. What does it mean, the hybrid solution for Teams? And just, uh, just uh, as a small outlook for the software-based solution, we have the virtual smart node, which you can see on the first column. Uh, basically, it's running on a, uh, on a virtualized environment, or it can run on a cloud service like Microsoft Azure. We will talk about it later. The rest of the, rest of the SBCs you see on the picture without any mark on top of it, they are current products. Uh, they are not certified with Teams, but they can use in different applications. For example, the last column, which is the SN10500, it's a large, huge, uh, large scale SBC for carrier integration. So it's a little bit doubtful that, uh, that basically we carry also other products for other services than Teams. All right, so let's look into the applications, how you can use our product in the team's environment. Here is the application diagram. On the first glance, it looks for you as an overwhelming diagram. The reason why it is overwhelming, that shows the versatility of the pattern SBCs. 
because we can have TDM ports, we can have IP to IP connection, we can connect the internet, it can act as an IP router, it can connect the SIP trunk, and of course it can connect the, uh, the Microsoft Teams direct routing. But let's break down a little bit this application just to have in mind that it's an overwhelming application. So I, will, I try to break it down into some several different applications. So the first use case where basically you don't have any TDM ports, it's a pure OIP solution. When you are connecting the on-premise devices, whatever it is, basically it can be IP devices, it can be soft phones, or it can be, uh, it can be, sorry, it can be IP PBX, soft phones, soft clients, uh, whatever you can imagine basically on the customer side can be connected to the Patton SBC and the best and SBC basically doing the routing between the teams and between the SIP trunk, which you are getting from your provider. It's coming with the normal SIP, uh, SIP uh, uh, based features like SIP, SIP security, SIP normalization, and it's also coming with the core quality monitoring and alerting. Uh, but first to mention here that the Patton SBCs and the, what we will talk about today, all of our SBCs can be orchestrated by the Patton Cloud. You may ask the question, what is Patton Cloud? But you just need to wait a few more slides uh, to understand what is it in reality. <clears throat> all right, so on the, on the next slide, uh, you, you may see a very similar application than before. Uh, the only difference here that we utilize the hybrid <clears throat> approach of the Patton SBCs meaning that the Patton SBCs are coming with built-in TDM ports. And these, these TDM ports can be used to uh, integrate and connect legacy PBXs. So well, on the picture, you can see that the Patton SBC beside the normal IP uh, devices behind the, uh, the SBC, uh, it also connects a legacy PBX with PRI, BRI, even on, on the analog ports it can be. And of course, uh, this can, basically carry on the similar SIP security, SIP normalization, and core quality monitoring and alerting, and can be orchestrated by the Patent Cloud. All right, uh, the next application is the survivability. So you may think that what's happened if your internet is break down. Uh, the thanks for the hybrid approach of the Patent SBC. You may have still keep the traditional PSTN from your provider. It can be BRI, PRI, analog, whatever. So basically, in the case when you your internet service would, would drop down, uh, the Patton SBC is still able to connect to the PSTN. So basically, you can pro provide a, a, a emergency calls. And thanks for the feature of the local SIP registrar, basically, you can keep the station to station calling. What does it mean? That you are not losing the connectivity between the extensions you are carrying on locally. So that's a very handy feature uh, when it comes to survivability. All right, coming over uh, from the, uh, from the purpose-built hardwares. So let's look into it, what we can offer on the software side of things. So basically in this ap application, you see a centralized SBC. It can run on a virtualized environment. As you can see on the picture, there are multiple instances running in the virtualized environment. So why we put this here, why we put here that this is on roadmap, the solution is ready. You can deliver it immediately to the customers. What is, not, uh, what is on the roadmap, and we are working very close with Microsoft to have it fulfilled, is to have our virtual SBC, the virtual smart node, uh, available in the Microsoft Azure marketplace. So basically, uh, you still can use the Microsoft Azure right now, but uh, you need to install the Patton SBC manually, uh, while in the case of uh, it will be available on the marketplace, basically you can download it from the marketplace itself. So what this application doing, uh, basically it's helping the, uh, the, the service providers to have multiple instances, instead of going on premise with the customer, you can manage it centrally. Uh, it is completely Patton Cloud orchestrated instances you have in the, in the Microsoft Azure or in the virtualized environment, while you can, very similar way as with the purpose-built hardware, you can connect to the Microsoft phone system, eventually to the Teams uh, uh, over the IP network, and you can provide the SIP trunks towards to the, uh, to, towards to the customers. So what are the benefits coming with it? And uh, just, yep, 
with the central, centralized SBHC, basically uh, it's ideal for hosted service providers, no hardware requirement on the customer premise, so it's completely centralized. It's a scalable solution in Microsoft Azure Cloud. Uh, basically, uh, whatever uh, you are putting um, in the Microsoft Azure Cloud, the capacity will be defined by the computing power under the, the virtual SBC. Uh, it supports direct routing, it supports uh, ITSP SIP trunking, it supports SIP normalization, it supports the interoperability with the non-certified, not team certified devices. It, it provides additional security uh, for your voice services using the VPN connection towards to your end customer. And optionally, it can serve as a VPN concentrator. Why I'm saying that it's an optional, because basically that's not the main purpose here for the virtual SBC, but with the virtual SBC, you can terminate the VPN links from, uh, from, the, uh, from, the, uh, from the customer premise, right? You heard quite a lot of time about the Pattern Cloud during my presentation. So what the Pattern Cloud is doing? The Pattern Cloud is not just a simple management system. You may think of that it's a simple management system, but it's coming with much, much more feature. It incorporates a license pool, which comes very handy if you are managing multiple devices, because you can set dynamic license distribution between the, de the devices. So you basically, you have the built-in software licenses which are coming with your SBC, but you can lease additional licenses from your predefined pool from the Pattern Cloud. Also, it's coming with alarming and notification. You can do the complete supervision of your CPE. You have your config files management in the, in the cloud, but not just only management, it can also serve uh, for your troubleshooting. So basically shorten the times because you immediately are able to contact to the, uh, to the device which you have a problem. Uh, you can access the CLI, you can access the graphical user interface of the device from the Pattern Cloud. But beside that, you can do warranty management, configuration adaptation, and of course, it's coming with an additional provisioning, so you don't need to invest a third-party provisioning server. It supports zero touch, it supports the cloud wizards, uh, we call the Pattern wizards, which are essentially XML files and providing a graphical interface of the CLI, uh, and basically you can do the mass uh, update of the devices, the mass rollout of, this, of the, uh, of the uh, config files and so on. But the last but not least is that it's coming with an integration option that if you are a service provider, you may want to integrate this solution to our OSS and VSS uh, into your, any of your business processes. So it's more efficient with less problems. The Pattern Cloud is coming with uh, uh, multiple options as a plans. Uh, there is a, a basic, uh, basic plan. Uh, you can see the difference between the basic, standard, advanced, and professional. I will not go into the exact details. What are the differences? You can always contact the sales at pattern.com or the support at pattern.com to ask for questions about Pattern Cloud. But what I would like to uh, really emphasize here that the Pattern Cloud is coming with a 90-day free trial. So I encourage everybody on this webinar to apply for a free trial. Just to write a message to sales at pattern.com or to fulfill the form on pattern.com to apply for a free trial. The free trial will include the professional uh, plan. So basically, all the services which is listed here will be included in your service plan. All right, so you may think of that it's nice and powerful feature, but let me show you one more very new feature of the Pattern Cloud, uh, which is a very, very powerful feature. Uh, and it comes very, very handy when you are doing the, uh, the on-premise uh, on installations. We call this feature as a land discovery tool. Uh, basically, the land discovery tool is doing something that uh, you may not uh, you may not be able to manage the devices through the pattern cloud from uh, from the pattern cloud to the land side of the of the of the customer uh, cloud with this feature is not just only able to manage the pattern devices but with the land discovery tool you are also able to manage the devices which are beyond uh, the the SBC so we are doing the discovery 
we are identifying what is on the land side. Basically, after the discovery, you see multiple SIP devices, Wi-Fi access points, printers, IPPBX, you name it. Uh, so basically, what the land discovery allows you that from the land discovery tool, you would be able to manage even the uh, the SIP phones or the soft phones or whatever you have behind the SBC. So you can access uh, from the patent cloud to your SNOM phone, what I used as an example here in this presentation, uh, the web GUI of your, so, uh, of your phone, but not just only this one. Uh, if you would have a problem with your Wi-Fi wi access point, you can get the alerting from uh, this, uh, uh, this access point to the patent cloud. So you might be notified that the Wi-Fi access point has some problems. And of course, you can use many other stuff like you can use your printer and, uh, on, on, uh, behind, the, <coughs> behind the SBC. All right, so that's a very powerful and cool feature. It's a new feature of the Patent Cloud. So those who apply for a trial, you may be able to try it in, in the live system. So let me summarize a little bit of the feature set of the patent devices. Uh, here, I would not like to limit this to the SBCs only because it's also stands for gateway products. It's, a, it's a basically can be used for direct routing. It supports the legacy equipment integration. As I just hinted before, it comes with BRI, E1, FXS, and FXO port. Uh, with the FXO port, we have a new series of FX, FXS, uh, uh, the long reach ports, basically to reach out to 10 kilometer. The FXS are supporting a message weighting indicator, AOC, PACX, uh, TRO69, and so on. Uh, basically, with the SBCs, you would be able to connect non-certified um, non devices to the, to the uh, Microsoft telephony services. Uh, it has an extensive SIP interoperability partnership. So basically, you will see on the next slide that what other partners we are working with beside the Microsoft, because of course, we are not limiting ourselves to the Microsoft. All support zero touch provisioning. All of them is patent cloud orchestrated. So it's benefit from the floating software feature licensing. It's benefits from the remote troubleshooting. It benefits from the core quality monitoring. And they not just act as a voice service, but they can act as a complete IP routing device supporting VRRP, GRE, RIP, BGP. So basically the, uh, the well-known uh, routing protocols. All of them is coming with a dual stack of IPv4 and IPv6. It has a built-in ACL, packet and protocol-based routing. You can have a QoS management for upstream and downstream. It can act as a DHCP server or client. It can provide NAPT or PPPoE. So basically, that's a summary of the features which are supported on the patent devices. And I just hinted that we have an extensive SIP interop partnership. So let's look into it, what other uh, big names we are working with. So as you can see, of course, we are working with Microsoft, with Skype for Business, with Teams, but not just the, we are not limiting ourselves to this one because we are working together with our industry peers on the PBX side, like Unify, 3CX, Alcatel, Avaya, you name it. And also we are working on technology partners on the central side who are SoftSwitch or IMS providers like Arnet, Cisco, Broadsoft, uh, Metaswitch, Genband, Surpec, and Huawei. And uh, that would be it from my side on technical point of view. And buddy, uh, the floor is yours uh, to uh, show us what is the future in terms of Microsoft Teams direct routing. All right, thanks, Miklos. Excellent overview. So um, here's here's where we stand right now. Right now we have um, um, the uh, direct routing that uh, we support the direct routing on our flagship SBC and the SBC gateway line um, that Miklos just went over. Uh, that's all available now in uh, non-media bypass and direct routing. Um, what we're working on is uh, is our products that do not have DSPs uh, or that currently don't support transcoding through DSPs, uh, since that's a, a requirement of, of the MS team certification. So those are things that we're working on now on the SN5600 and the virtual smart node. Uh, and we're also, um, for all of our products, uh, investigating uh, the solution or working on the solution for uh, to support media bypass on all of our products. <clears throat> I wanted to take a quick second and lift up the hood a little bit and, and talk a little bit about um, 
the way that we're doing our license. And the reason for that is because as we did some of our market surveys and we were talking to the market about what's currently um, available, one of the big things that keep coming up is just the complexity and how hard it is and complicated it is. And trying to figure out even how to put a quote together with all these different licenses, it's we're hearing uh, a lot of that about the complexity. So <clears throat> I just wanted to show real quick here the way a license works, just just really quickly. So it's 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 a, a piece of code, a, a, a string of characters that gets analyzed on startup, and then the, the software sets a flag. And then as the software is running, as the device is running, it looks at that flag to make decisions about what features are available. Um, and so what typically you see in the market and, and and what Patton has also done is we bundled some of these licenses together to try to make it easier to purchase. Um, and so this bundle is a creates a single purchasing SKU that actually contains multiple licenses, and then these licenses activate those features. And that's fairly standard um, that we see in the marketplace too. And so all Trinity versions up to 3.18 um, are kind of using that model. Some of the problems though are things like you, you buy one SKU and then if you look in our patent cloud and you look at your license inventory, um, you don't see the SKU that you bought, you see the contents of the bundle. Um, and then the same sort of problem happens when it comes time to renew those licenses. You're not renewing what you originally purchased in the bundle, you're renewing these licenses. But one of the things that we really wanted to do is, is, is simplify. And so in our new <clears throat> model and, and Trinity versions, 3.19.2 and beyond, which is uh, our June milestone, which is just coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, we've modified and we've made these multifunction licenses where a single SKU license can enable multiple features. And what's that? what that's done is simplify not only the way that the code runs, but it also simplifies from a customer standpoint. You, you, the license that you order is a license that shows up in your cloud and in your inventory. It also is the license that gets renewed. Um, and makes it much, much easier um, to manage that. And so using that model in 13. or 3.19.2, um, we are introducing two new licenses. Um, one is a permanent device-based license. Um, and, and these licenses are full activation of Teams Direct Routing. Uh, they include TLS and SRTP device-wide. So um, those are all requirements uh, for for teams to operate and for the team's uh, certification. So that's why all of that's included. So that way you have everything you need, whether you already have it or not. We've gone ahead and just thrown in the TLS and the SRTP um, at no extra cost above the, the uh, direct routing activation, just to make sure that the device is ready. And that's part of our simplification process um, to try to make this easy. You don't have to think about it, we just take care of it for you. So the only difference between these two licenses um, there are cases where um, a cloud's not practical, cloud access isn't practical, whether you're in a secure environment or um, many different reasons you might not want um, to be part of the patent cloud. And in that case, you can get this uh, permanent device-based license, which is a one-time license that sits on your device um, and is active for the life of the, of the device. The second way is through the cloud, and, and the, the cloud is very, very flexible in this, the way the licenses work, and there's license pooling, and you can uh, float your licenses across devices. I won't get into all that, um, but the second, the CBFL MST license is the cloud-based feature license. Um, so you only need one or the other. You don't want me both. So the only decision you have to make is, do I want a permanent license or a cloud-based license? Um, so what we've done is try to simplify all the things that we have control over. You know, the Teams is a is, is sort of a beast. Uh, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of pieces. Um, and so what we've tried to identify is all the pieces that we as patent can control to make it easy. Uh, and that's what we've done with, with both with the licenses. And then we've also introduced this professional services SKU, uh, which is up to three hours of Teams integration support. And, and with that, our FAEs and our team can help you manage all of those other things that we're able to control. Now, there's still things like, you know, getting your TLS certificate that, that has to be handled. We can't really help you with that. There's some things with your Microsoft Teams account that you might have to do, but um, we've taken everything else and we can support through this uh, uh, integration, uh, Teams integration uh, service offering uh, to solve that. 
So Teams is really simple to set up. Um, so basically, you start with an SBC. That's the assumption. You know, uh, for this application, that has to be an SBC. And so some of you may know or may not be aware that some of our gateways you can buy as a gateway, um, and through adding licenses, they can become SBCs as well. So the assumption is you're starting with an SBC. So then you just get one of one of the two licenses I just described, apply those, and then you use this uh, this integration services um, offering to to call in, use our FAs, and set everything up. It's super easy. Um, if you want to try to do it yourself, we've also created a, a wizard, two different uh, specific Teams wizards, and um, there's a video that describes those and how to apply those and how to self uh, configure if you want. So here's our uh, another view of our product matrix that Nicholas was talking about earlier. Um, these the the top group, the transcoding ESBCs, are the those are the SKUs that are officially certified by Microsoft uh, for direct routing. The middle group um, are those two SKUs or those two model groups that were on that chart that Muklo showed that had the gray logo over. So those actually are Microsoft, we call Microsoft Teams ready, um, but because they don't support transcoding, um, they're, they're not actually certified. Um, and so those would be used in a case, say, for example, your PBX is, is providing the transcoding and you don't need a, the SPC to do that transcoding. Uh, you can still use those Microsoft Teams licenses on those devices and enable Teams communication. Um, if you look at the Teams sessions, uh, similar idea to SIP sessions, but one thing you need to be aware of is that, you know, uh, the number of concurrent team sessions is, is going to be dependent on CPU usage. Um, and so this is an approximation of what we put in here is sort of an approximation of the number of sessions that you can get, but it's going to be deter um, determined by things like, you know, what are the features for doing advanced routing on the SBC that takes up some more CPU. If you have analog ports that could take up some more um, CPU usage. So this gives you kind of an overview of what to expect. And again, the ones at the bottom there are the gateways I discussed. Now, when those gateways are upgraded to an SBC, those are also certified Teams devices then. Um, all right, and then here's a little bit about the our MSRP or list pricing on these licenses. And uh, what you'll find out and what we were really happy to discover is that we sit in a really great place um, cost-wise in the marketplace uh, for these licenses. Uh, so we're really excited that not only we have the differentiator of uh, the simplicity of integrating teams on a patent device, um, we're also really price competitive. And so we're really excited for all of you to be able to, to run with these. Um, so the only thing besides a team license that you might have to consider is if you need additional SIP sessions. Um, so all of our devices come with a fixed number of default uh, SIP sessions that are included. Um, all of those will work. If you just apply the Teams license, you'll get that many Teams sessions. If you need more, all you have to buy is more SIP sessions. You don't need extra SRTP or anything else. Um, so it's it's about as easy as we can make it. Um, for, for our channel, uh, Most I think just about everybody here is in our channel. Uh, we really, really want to encourage, um, and we're making it a must, to include our integration services on any quotes that, that uh, go out containing these licenses. And that's, again, for the simplicity part of it, to try to make it easy. Um, some clients might say, hey, I want to go in and do it myself. Um, I personally, I, I have a, a nonprofit outside of this company that I, I work with and trying to set it up myself uh, just so that I can get the experience. And it is complicated. It is complicated. So. Um, we really want to uh, to encourage the ease and have your customers lean on us, let us do the heavy lift and, and get things up and running for you. Um, so here's some of our team's related re resources. Um, you can screenshot or get this uh, after the webinar will be available. Uh, the MS Teams step-by-step -step video just went up. Uh, it's fantastic, very clear, very easy to do. Um, and uh, we want to encourage you to utilize all these resources. So with that, that's going to wrap up the presentation portion of the webinar. And it looks like we do have some questions. So let's 
related to the licenses. So with virtual smart node, could you purchase a permanent license? Um, so if you're using a virtual smart node, that is a, a subscription service. It's a cloud-based subscription service. And so that would require the cloud-based feature licenses, which were our annual licenses. Um, let's see what else we have here. So um, maybe the one for Miklos, if you want to explain maybe in a little bit more detail, we did kind of go over the some of the use cases, but uh, we're, we have a question asking about uh, explaining where an IP phone calls into a Teams client. Yeah, wanna... oh, okay, all right. So, uh, so basically, uh, uh, how this works if the IP, IP phone calls to the Teams, uh, it's either registered, the IP phone is registered to the, uh, to the IPPBX, and basically will be the, be the SIP trunk between the SBC and the IPPBX. Uh, the IP phone can call out to the teams, and of course the SBC is doing the routing. So based on based on the configura configurable variables, you uh, the SBC is deciding that this call should go into the teams direction or this calls to go to the uh, SIP trunk direction. Uh, there, there is also a scenario when in the when the SIP phones are directly registered or IP phones are directly registered to the uh, to the pattern SBC. This is what I just described as a uh, as a SIP registrar. So basically uh, the SIP, SIP or IP phone is directly registered to SBC and doing the same routing. So based on the, based on the uh, call setup, the SBC will decide whether this call should go into the team's direction or it should go to the, it's basically configuration on the SBC, uh, how, how the IP, IP phone would be able to call out to the teams, but it is certainly possible. So that's, that's, uh, that's the purpose of the SBC. Uh, I hope I hope I answered the, your question, uh, Ernesto. Well, while you're on the use case um, topic, uh, we have another question asking about survivability. Could you secure PSTN and emergency calls from Teams clients? Yes, you you can secure. So basically, it's an obligation in Teams direction. It's an obligation to use the SIP, uh, the TLS and SRTP, so it's secure. But if your service provider who is connecting to the SBC supports those, so I mean TLS, SRTP, basically you can have the secure call towards to the PSTN. It, the PSTN can be, of course, IP. If we are talking about different than IP, basically uh, that's a different scenario. So it can be E1, BRI, PRI, FX, SFX, or whatever. But uh, but in general, generally say in Teams environment, it is it is required to use the SRTP and TLS. So it is secure. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> um, could you speak to the main arguments uh, with uh, audio codes, ribbons, and in, in the Teams environment? What you know? What's our differentiator with our gate with our SBCs, um, and it, particularly if related to Teams? Can you speak to that, Nicola? If 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 I can just provide you a simple answer. The simplest answer would be the licensing. Uh, Buddy just explained to you that it's a one-shot license, you purchase and you are good to go. And I, I believe that in the case of the competition, it's a little bit more complicated or even, even far more complicated than, than, than it is. So it provides the same service. So of course, because the certification is the same for everybody. So basically the services which are available on the devices are pretty much the same. So where we can simplify our life is that licensing and you can basically very easily install a pattern as we see with the licensing, what just described by Buddy. Right, and then the cloud, of course, is a second differentiator. Uh, of course, well. that's that's you obviously know, and, a very good point, Buddy. Obviously the pattern cloud orchestration is something which is unique. Yeah, and, and Miklos makes a really good point. And that's the whole point of the certification through Pat, uh, through Microsoft is, is to sort of create a uniform platform. So when it comes to providing team services, um, everybody's sort of on the same playing field because all we're doing is providing that connectivity. Uh, where the differentiators happen is exactly what um, Miklos described is primarily in the, in the administrative part. You know, the simplicity of getting it set up, the simplicity of, of ordering in a quote, um, and you know, even price competitiveness, um, and certainly cloud is a, is a, a really big differentiator. Um, let's see, we're on the new. 
Uh, okay, another question here. Oh, if I saw a couple of people wave, uh, raising their hands, and, and um, if it would be better if you just write a question, because uh, so we don't turn mics on and off and all that. Um, so uh, I guess talking about the land discovery, uh, Miklos, maybe this one's for you as well. Um, would it allow access devices inside a non-routable private IP network? Well, as long as the devices are seeing each other and able to communicate, so basically they are in the same subnet, we are able to do that. That's simple as it is. So it's uh, in order to, uh, you should be in the same subnet, even if, even if it is on the LAN side, and that's it. Right. Um, it looks like we have somebody leaving and they're asking about the, getting a copy of the presentation and yeah, we'll, we'll send out an email uh, with, with the materials uh, where, where you'd be able to download this. Um, so why, why the um, professional service up to three hours support has one price level regardless we compare? Um, no, we did, we did think about that and the, uh, we did tier the, the professional services so that you can actually um, have that be a profit center for you that you, you'll be able to actually, you know, we, we want you to use it. We want people to, to use our support um, so that they have the most success in getting patent teams integrations up and running. And so that's our goal is the success of the customer. So that's why we want to encourage you to use those integration hours. And, and the way that we encourage you is to be able to get, allow you to have margin on those on that uh, SKU as, a, as one of our channel partners. So that way, we hope that you include those on the on the quotes uh, to get the best possible quality experience with your customers. Um, can the permanent Teams license be transferred from one device to another? Yeah, you can apply a permanent license, but you lose it on one, and you have to. It's more of a manual process. We're in the cloud. Cloud has a similar type thing. It's a floating uh, license pool, and again. You really want the details on that some great videos on how that works um but yeah i mean you can once you have a license it, it it only applies to one device and you can like manually i guess unapply it and then apply it to another device so that that could be done so are there any other questions some really good questions there okay. i don't see other question buddy all right we'll give one second more last chance for questions you can always right. contact support at patent.com or sales at patent.com if you, any question would come up. Just contact your sales rep or uh, you on the usual way, support at patent.com, sales at patent.com, and we will. Right, and there's my uh, email is up on the screen right now. Just jot that down if you have a question out of here and shoot me an email. And um, again, I'm um, the the product management team in here at Patent can be responsive and we get your questions wherever you need to get them. Well, thank you for your giving us your time today. We really, really appreciate it. And um, look forward to hearing from you about all your success with uh, teams and patent products. Thank you, and we'll, we'll see you next time.